I want to learn how to make games. No more putting it off. I'm starting right now, today, and I need your help. Will you help me? Oh, that's awesome. Congrats. Sure, sure. Follow me this way. Here's everything you need to learn. Good luck. Bye. Um, what? Hey guys, welcome. It's no secret that learning how to make video games is tough. We all seem to love talking about how hard it is to make games, but I've been making games for six years now. And within the last year, I actually sold my house to fund my game studio. So this is something that I'm really passionate about. And I'd love to share what I've learned about how exactly you can start making games right now. I didn't go to school for game design or for programming. I went to school for accounting, which I no longer do. So I really can't speak about how good the programs are in schools for game design. But if a friend were to ask me what I thought they should do, I would absolutely say do not go to school for game design. Obviously, this is just my opinion, but to me, it just feels like a waste of time and money, especially if your end goal is to start your own studio to make your own games. But even if you want to get a job in the game development industry, this is an artistic industry, and so you can get a job based on your portfolio. And your portfolio is gonna get more impressive and grow faster as you're constantly learning by creating your own projects during the years that you would have been in school just learning about game design. Also, most colleges and universities just pad their programs with extra courses that you're really not going to need. But most importantly, the game development industry is such a rapidly changing industry that by the time you finish your degree, a lot of what you've learned is going to be obsolete. You can learn everything you need to know about game development online for free or for pretty cheap, and you can do it faster than it will take you to get a degree. I don't usually like giving hyper-specific advice because everything kind of depends on you and your learning style. But in this case, I'm just going to say, do not make your own game engine. I see a lot of YouTubers creating their own game engines, and I've heard all the pros like how amazing it is to have perfect control over everything and that it's not going to be padded with all of these extra features that you don't need. I also found the story of how Stardew Valley was made, and it took the guy like five years, and he did everything himself, including the art and the music and creating his own engine, and he never once asked for help. I found it inspiring. But with all of that said... If you want to get started making games, just pick a game engine. There are a lot of them. Unreal and Unity are the ones that you're going to hear the most about. Godot is growing pretty quickly as well. They are all free. They are all highly capable engines. If you want my personal opinion on which ones to use, I would recommend Unity. Full disclaimer, it's the only engine I've ever used, and it's the only one I'm probably ever going to use. First off, you have more options. Unity is really great for 3D, but it is amazing for 2D. But one of the best reasons to learn Unity is it's the easiest to learn. And one reason for that is because of how many tutorials and online resources there are for Unity. It's insane. Another reason is because Unity uses the C-sharp programming language. Unreal Engine uses the C++ programming language, which is a lot more difficult to learn. And Godot uses its own scripting language called GDScript, which I don't know anything about. But C-sharp is much easier to learn than C++. And yes, most Unreal users use Blueprint, which is a visual scripting system where you don't actually have to type out the code. You just connect different nodes together. Unity also now has a built-in visual scripting solution called Bolt, and there are a rising number of tutorials available for that as well. I'm not going to get into the graphics debates between Unity versus Unreal, because honestly, when you're comparing high-level graphics, you're talking about AAA-level art assets, and if you're just starting out making games, you're not going to be anywhere near that level. So as an indie developer, that's not even really something you need to focus on or concern yourself with. I really want to highlight the word some in this section because it's really, really easy to get stuck in what's called tutorial purgatory, where you start learning and then you realize just how much there is to learn and you lose all of your confidence. And so you just follow a lot of tutorials for a really, really long time and you're kind of just stuck there. This is not a place that you want to be. And I was stuck there for about two years when I was first starting out. So what you'll find when you're following basic entry level tutorials is 
you will learn some stuff and you're going to get kind of excited. But then you're going to reach a point where it feels like you're no longer learning anything and you're kind of just following along. They write a line of code on the screen and you write the same line of code on your screen, but it doesn't really mean anything to you. This is because entry level tutorials when you are brand new are great at teaching you how to navigate within the game engine and get comfortable in there. But that's it. It will not teach you how to code and it will not teach you good game design theories. To clarify, beginner level tutorials will teach you this stuff, but that doesn't mean it's going to stick in your brain. Following step by step tutorials, you'll learn a thing or two. You'll get super comfortable in the engine. But when it comes to complex programming or creating particle systems or making shaders or doing anything complicated, you're not going to learn much by copying someone else. And that is why you should probably choose a few basic tutorials to follow to get your feet wet and show you the ropes and learn at least the basics of how everything works. This is especially important for the next section. But by learning the basics, you're also learning the terminology so that you know what to type into Google. But learning the really hard stuff, that's going to take more than just copying what another person is doing on their screen. So let's see how you go about doing that. If you're enjoying the video, then please give it a like. It really helps our channel grow and reach more people. We really appreciate it. So for this part, if you want to learn fast, you're going to do this as independently as humanly possible. You've followed a few tutorials and now you know the basics. So now pick a game like Pong or Flappy Bird or Snake to copy. The reason you do this is because it's going to save you the headache of creating game rules and finding game art. You already know the game rules because you've played these games and you can just find art assets right off of Google because this is a project that's just for you to learn so you don't need to worry about copyright issues. It just saves time. You already know how the game works right from the get-go so now you just have to make it. Now this step is the most challenging but it's also the most rewarding because you're going to have a ridiculous amount of of those aha moments or those click moments where it finally just clicks and you're like, yep, I get it. I finally get it. The reason this happens is because you're just taking this old game and breaking it up into tiny little steps. And all you got to do is figure out how to do each step one step at a time. Let's say you're going to make Flappy Bird. Okay, you need to get an image on the screen. Now you need to add gravity so it falls when you don't press anything. Now you need to figure out how to make the bird move up each time you click. Now you add those pipes that scroll across the screen. Now you figure out how to make the bird die. Now you got to figure out how to add points to the player's score each time they pass an obstacle. It's just one step after the other. And each and every step will be a challenge and you won't know how to do it when you first get there. You're going to be on Google and YouTube constantly, but that's okay. Because this time when you're trying to fix one specific problem or create one really specific thing, you're going to remember the solution. So in my opinion, there is no faster way to learn how to make games than by copying an old game this way. So you've learned your engine and now you've learned some scripting as well. Now, when you want to move on to your own project, there are a few other things you need to consider like art and sound effects and music. So let's talk about your options for art. You're either going to create 2D sprites or 3D models. For 2D sprites, there is a free program with similar capabilities of Photoshop called GIMP. I found it really unintuitive to use though, and there are way more tutorials available for Photoshop. So if you want my recommendation, I recommend Photoshop. Or if you're creating pixel art for your game, a sprite seems to be really popular, and it's only 20 bucks. For 3D models, Blender. Blender is free. Blender is amazing. I used it for a good while before I shifted my focus to 2D games. Just know that it is a beast of a program. It has so many capabilities, so it is a little tricky to learn, but it is a phenomenal tool and it's getting better all the time. If you don't want to learn how to make your own art, you can purchase art assets off of asset stores for pretty cheap. And if you buy them, then you're free to use them in any commercial product as you see fit. This goes for characters and environment art. There are many popular games that used asset packs, especially 3D games. They'll often use like vegetation packs and things like that just to populate the world with things that you don't necessarily want to have to create yourself from scratch 
like trees and bushes and things like that. But you could create an entire game with purchased art off of asset stores. No shame in that, and it'll save you a lot of time. Just be sure to give your game something unique that makes it stand out in its own way. You probably don't want your game to be labeled as some sort of asset flip. For sound effects, download Audacity. It's free, and it's how you will edit sound effects for your game. It's really easy to use, really easy to learn, and it has lots of cool effects built right into it. But besides that, there are many, many sound effects and music packs that you can buy off of asset stores. I purchased a pack of just under 10,000 sound effects for like 12 bucks, and they are high quality sound effects. Apart from that, you can also hire people online. Fiverr is a really popular place. There are lots of composers online that are looking for freelance work. I've seen prices as low as $5 a song on there. You do not need to do everything yourself. You don't have to be a purist. There's no shame in purchasing assets. I actually think it's a really smart thing to do. The next way to level up your game making skills is by participating in game jams, at least a couple. It's going to test your ability to work under really stressful conditions to meet a very tight deadline. And you'll end up making a completely original game in a really short amount of time, which is a super cool feeling. But more than that, you'll learn what it's like to finish a full original project. Copying Pong or Flappy Bird or Snake is one thing, but creating a retro shooter or a tiny Metroidvania or a simple roguelike in a few days is another matter entirely. Here's why you want to participate in at least a few of these. You'll learn what kinds of games you like to make. You'll learn all the tiny little things that need to go into making a game that you might not have touched on before, like main menus and decent sound effects and how to manage your data and potentially collaborating with other devs but also you're going to get critical feedback. And this is very important. A few people are probably going to love your game. A few people are probably going to find it to be okay. And a few people are going to write paragraphs of stuff that bugged them about your game. This is just the nature of things. You can't create things that everybody likes. And as a game developer, you're going to have to learn how to take negative feedback and learn from it rather than be hurt by it or take it personally. I'd love to hear if you have any additional tips for how to get started making games in the comments below. That's all I got. See you in the next one.